And what does this mean for Australia and for you? Because our culture is changing. As we shift this great culture from the Anglo-Saxon dominance to the Asian Hindu Buddhist Islamic culture, wouldn't it be great if there's a country somewhere in the right time zone, in the right geography, with the right cultural mix of its population, which could be the hinge through which this great cultural change shifted? And fortunately for New Zealand, the country to its left is screwing up its opportunity. Because we're fascinated by uh, 1,200 refugees in Manus and Nauru. We're not getting over the fact that we should just bring them in. And we are blowing our opportunity by telling all of the Asia-Pacific region, by putting our taxpayer-funded maps with a map of Australia, a red line through it, and the words, no way, you'll never make Australia home. And somehow we're dumb enough to think only asylum seekers read it. And we are blowing our opportunity to be the hinge through which this great cultural transition shifts, and instead being the cringe. But how does this change more specifically for Australia? Well, 51% of Australians have one parent born overseas. One third of Sydney is born overseas. We now have many different migrant migrants coming in. Let's just take the Sudanese for a second. I'm not picking on the Sudanese because they're Sudanese. I'm picking on the Sudanese because they're particularly new. Think through the head of a Sudanese person. You come from a conflict zone. Who is the person you distrust most in Sudan? Military. People wearing what? A uniform. And what are you wearing when you attend an emergency? So are those types of people coming from the culture that they come from, given the circumstances of where they're coming from, are they likely to trust you or not trust you the moment they see you? They're not going to trust you. Is it their fault? No. It's just a cultural awareness. And one of the great shames, I think, in this country since 2001, since we've been anti-refugee, is we are no longer funding refugee integration programs when they come to this country. We're not teaching people as much as we should that, guess what? In this country, you trust a uniform. We've got to break generations of training when people come into this country. People don't learn this by osmosis. And we're doing them and us a great disservice by not being culturally aware. And with this great shift that's going on, in the culture of global trade, the largest migrant markets for Australia now are India and China. Are we prepared for that cultural change and that cultural influx? Do your teams know how to deal with people from the different cultural backgrounds? One of the issues that's come up both last night and today is the issue of violence against emergency workers. How much of that is based on cultural misunderstandings that we as a nation haven't dealt with as part of our integration programs when people come and therefore the first front line in the cultural misunderstanding is you and your teams and have you prepared you and your teams for that? So what does that mean for you? You've got to have the culture awareness for those in your teams and the people that you serve. Now, I know a lot of you, particularly I learned last night, Victorian Ambulance is doing a lot in this area. That's fantastic. But we need to know about some of those issues like the, the distrust of uniforms and how do we deal with the gender issues from different cultures? How do you know when a male medical worker may intervene with a female patient? How do we know when to recognise gender and sexual based violence issues that need to be reported back and how that needs to be done where we don't put the patient, the victim, in even more danger. There's a lot of complexity when you have a country like ours with hundreds of different cultures and hundreds of different cultural contexts where at the sharp end of an emergency when you or your teams are attending an emergency they need to have been empowered because you are leading from behind empowering your staff members with training and education to be able to make those intercultural judgments on the spot in an emergency setting. Very, very tough to do. And it's got to be part of our preparation and training. And as leaders, it's part of your role as leaders to make sure that your teams are empowered to make those decisions. Now, as part of this great shift, we have the increasing ageing population problem in Australia. Did you know in Australia, in the year 2012, more people left the job market by leaving than entering the job market through growing up. In other words, in 2012, the future ageing population became the present ageing population problem. And in 2012, the post-war baby boom became the post-war retirement boom. So the challenge that your industry has is we're having an increasing demand on health services, particularly through the ageing population, 
At a time when we are shrinking the tax base and therefore governments have more pressure to reduce funding. So how do we increase services in a time of reduced funding? That's a really hard balance that we need to figure out. And I don't have an answer for that. 